We are at the factory and we've wheeled a brand new GT35 out and we thought we'd show you a few highlights of the new features. They're only small things, but we're constantly developing, looking to you know, just constantly refine those, that drill rig. So we've actually made this a lot lighter. So the, the first version was really heavy and was too much for one person. So we've lightened this out. You can see the size of me, I'm tiny, and it's a, an easy one-man lift, nice and controlled. This is purely aesthetic, but I actually quite like it. We flipped the colors around. So these are now black, the controls, uh, rather than silver and black, they're now black on silver. It doesn't mean anything, but it looks a lot cooler. Looks cool. So the rig definitely works better because it looks cooler. Um, and we've actually really worked on the naming conventions of all the labeling. Because we sell rigs all over the world, everyone has a different name for it. The Mast, the Derrick, you know, and everyone's got, so we try to uniform it for the US market, the Canadian market, but we also do them in separate languages like French as well so that it's bespoke to the country. So there's uh, the detents that automatically lock on um, and they're just a, a release as you can see there but there's also the option of, of use twisting the handle and locking it in a different position. So you can, if you wanted it part way for, for a purpose, you could you could lock it part way. So again, the, the control of like the mist, the yes. setting, the, setting your rate on your mist pump you can do from here by locking it off. That's how you do it. The one new control we've actually added to the main control panel is the water valve. So we've now got a shut off on your mud pump feed. So hydraulically, you can close your mud flow, your, your water line um, main feed into the rig. Why? Because if you're force feeding from your mud system, for instance, um, some people supercharge by pumping to their mud pump. That means that when you turn the mud pump off, you'd still get flow going through the pump and coming out as you break the rod, it'd still be so this is, you shut the valve and that stops that. So it stops you getting wet. Another thing to add, Josh, is the lever you've got your hand on. Let's explain that one. Five different pumps. So pump one is designated for, for the, the, specifically the, for the mud yes, pump. So that's all pump. it does is it will either do the centrifugal or yeah. the piston pump. And it's in either or. So you yeah, yeah, you can't run dual, obviously. You just select whether you yeah. want uh, which is a flick of the switch. Uh, there we go, mud pump there, yep. yeah. Um, mud pump on, and you would either choose if you're gonna use the piston pump or the centrifugal. However, if you're going really deep and you need to boost that centrifugal, there's advantages to each pump. We all love a centrifugal, um, but they're lacking in the pressure. So the only way you get the pressure and flow is by rotating them faster. So to, we have to give it extra hydraulics. So. You have the option of that side lever, which takes 50% of the hydraulic pump number three, and it shares that into hydraulic pump number one, boosting the amount of hydraulic flow and pressure you've got. And that steals it. Here's pump three. Um, that steals it from this row of hydraulics. And all these controls you can see, and you're not using whilst drilling. So your mast tower, working table, head slide, winch slide, things like that. So. It utilizes something that isn't used whilst you're drilling to boost the amount of flow you've got to your pumps and you're taking that revs right up. One of the features on this uh, drill uh, is that we use the hammer lubrication to actually lubricate the guide rails as well. So when you're drilling in, uh, when you're hammer drilling, you'll actually have this up and then to lubricate the hammer, you push this down and that will give you 100 cc's or about six cubic inches of fluid and inject it right into your line. When you're wanting to lubricate your guide rails, you flip this down, and it's the same thing. Move your head up to the top of your mast, give it a shot, and then move that down, and it lubricates it's your guide rails. No grease point. But this is new, auxiliary connection. So if you wanted to run a hydraulic grouter, a hydraulic loop reeler, you've got a plug in here. It's the same line as you have for you plug your sand guzzler in permanently, but it means you don't have to unplug your sand guzzler and you get the same advantage. You can flip between the pit pump, so the sand guzzler, or, or your auxiliary connections. Just handy. There's a flow control valve on there and a gauge, but I think we're gonna put one here as well so you can just do it, so you don't have to walk back. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, we mentioned the water flow valve, the hydraulic tap, basically. That's the simple way of doing it. So it's your ball valve, but it's hydraulically ram operated. If you walk around here, guys, you'll see Obviously the same setup, you've got your piston pump and your centrifugal mud pump here. 
the hose to connect isn't on right now, but you would you'd literally just undo here and decide which one you want. This T here is for priming. If you're not pumping back, like we talked about pumping back from your mud system, for instance, you can prime through, through this here. So another new thing we have for this model are the folding railings. The reason we have this is because you have to come up here quite often to put the spacer plates in between the, the, each row of rods. So this is to keep you safe whilst you're up here. You're only up here for a short period of time, but it's uh, essential that we have it and it's a good upgrade. Another feature that we have on this drill that you might not be familiar with is we've got a rack uh, built in here to hold uh, a sand guzzler or a pit pump for when you're transporting the rig. So you basically lift it out of the pit with your winch and set it right in the, right in the hole and move to the next hole and then set her back in the, in the pit. So. The customer who purchased this drill uh, required a drill cage. This is one model. We also have another model that extends lower and, and covers all the way around the rod handling system. If you are in a country that doesn't require cages, you can also order them without a cage. So another, another feature that I really like about these rotary heads is that you have a mechanical lube pump. Um, and this mechanical pump actually pushes lubrication through these clear hoses. So your, your driller or your second man will be able to actually see the oil flowing through and see the quality of oil through the, the transparent lines. And you can see where it's going into the top of the gearbox in, in a couple positions and it's flooding the entire gear set. So you'll have uh, more efficient cooling and lubrication. And this also comes in handy when you're drilling on angles and you wouldn't be able to see anything in the cyclos anyway. So uh, it's just to maximize the lubrication and cooling of the, the rotary gearbox. Three inch lines don't bend very well and to have them rolling over all the time, it, they're, they're not very malleable and they cost a fortune when they go. So it's better to have two inch lines except for we have the internal diameter of a two inch line is actually restrictive compared to the through hole of the head and the rods. So to get the volume of flow through, we have two two inch lines. That also has a secondary advantage, apart from being more cost effective for replacement, is that if they wear, and they do wear, it is a wear item, they'll probably last years, but when they go, it doesn't mean your day's over. What it means is that you can keep drilling by just simply plugging the other one and you'll get enough flush through just the one two inch line to keep drilling, no problem. We had all the early spec models only had the one line, drill no problem, but two is definitely an advantage. Another feature we have on these drill rigs is the air compressor that's built right in and powered by the rig hydraulics. This compressor is five horsepower, uh, 130 PSI or nine bar. It has uh, 24 CFM and there is an air tank mounted underneath the frame that is 70 liters or 18 and a half gallons. And uh, we have two airlines, one at the front or at the back of the rig right by the compressor, and there's one right at the front of the rig by the control panel for the rod rack.